I present myself as Angela Mitlan Sochi. I am the executive director of Lideramos. It's really a pleasure to have Gabriela and Norma with us here today. Um, I'm also from the Central Valley, so Latina leaders really holds a special place in my heart. And I was delighted when I learned about their work and then to, to learn that they've been doing this for over 25 years is really remarkable for, um, for a place, you know, like that we grew up in the Central Valley, which is, you know, Bakersfield is a big city, but we're surrounded by rural communities, rural areas, um, where many of us are first generation you know, college students, if, you know, raised by people who may or may not have had a chance to even finish school. So it's it's really remarkable um, the work of the Latina leaders are doing in Kern County. Um, and just, you know, Lideramos is a national organization promoting sort of community leadership development throughout the country. Our goal is sort of grassroots community leadership development. And so for me, two Latina leaders embodies all of what that's about. Um, they're a self-determined program. You guys are creating and designing programs that meets the needs of people at the local level. And I really admire that. And I hope to learn a little more about that today as well. But I think to, to jump into it, um, I wanna introduce both Gabriela and Norma. I'll start with Gabriela, who's actually the current um, president of Latinas in Kern County. Um, you've been the president since 2017, which is quite remarkable. <laughs> so congratulations and thank you for <laughs> taking on that, that leadership. Um, you are also the external affairs advisor for California Resources Corporation, which in that role you oversee their charitable portfolio, which is really amazing because you get to, you know, use your experience and leadership to work directly with the community. Um, and you were originally born in LA, but you were transported to the Central Valley when you were four years <laughs> yes. old. Hey, you transported, is... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> which I'm glad, I'm glad While your I'm parents, told. yes, <laughs> I'm glad your parents brought you to the Central Valley. And so whenever I get a chance, I'm going to give your mom a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And um, beyond sort of your role with the Latinas in Kern County, you also serve on various sort of professional boards from the Bakersfield Adventist Health Foundation. You work with the Court Appointed Special Advocates of Kern County, Taft College Foundation, and the list goes on, um, which hopefully we can find opportunities to, to learn more about Gabriela as the, as the, as the platica proceeds. Um, I also know because I'm a follower of Gabriela on Instagram, she has an awesome, you know, just spirit about her and surroundings and you know she does enjoy spending time with her husband her mom and her dogs which are very very cute <laughs> thank you um and now i introduce norma rojas mora who is also a longtime leader and advocate of latinas in kern county you were the past president and probably prior to gabriela um, and you hold a very important role in your in your community as well, Norma. You're the executive director of government relations, partnerships, and development for Bakersfield College. Um, in that role, you're doing some remarkable things at the municipal, state, and federal level. You work with educational institutions, with community nonprofits. Um, you know, you're kind of all over the place. <laughs> I kind of see you as a as an araña, you know, <laughs> weaving some amazing things. Um, which include, you know, your, your, you created the Rural Health Equity and Learning Collaborative, um, HEAL, which I love that name, which is a eight county coalition dedicated to addressing healthcare needs in rural areas. Um, the High Road Training Partnership, which is a coalition of labor organization, research institutes, educators, and nonprofit groups dedicated to diversifying Kern County's economy. And again, the list goes on and hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about that. But I think what is remarkable about both of you is you know, how your professional achievements obviously probably leans into sort of your vision and how you're cultivating Latina um, leaders in Kern County as well. And so I, I, I just kind of want to, to thank you again. And I wanna get us started um, with you know, if you both can maybe share a little bit about sort of this 25 history of your organization and sort of what are your primary programs? Yeah, I, 
I'm looking at Gabby and she's looking at me like, Norma, you take this because you're the elder on the call. <laughs> <laughs> no. I probably have been with the organization much longer, um, which I, I'm happy to happy about. Latina Leaders was actually founded in 1998 by a woman um, named Linda Quinones Vaughn. At that time, Linda Quinones Vaughn was part of the um, public affairs team for um, PG&E. But really what was happening in Kern County is we had just appointed the first Latina, first and only Latina assemblywoman. Um, and there really was this big gap, right? In Latina networking opportunities and holding positions of influence in Kern County. It's like you could handpick those that were in those uh, positions to be able to make um, decisions. And so they were really looking to find a voice and support one another in both the professional and career journeys. Um, I, you know, a lot of those women remain in Kern County and are now, we have our first judge who was part of the first team. Mm -hmm. Linda Quinones Vaughn now works for the state of California's business, small business um, uh, effort, the Office of Small Business. Um, and there's just this uh, desire to continue to help one another here in Kern County. But uh, the organization didn't become incorporated actually into, until 2009. We're a 100% volunteer organization. And it's just been incredible to see this journey. Uh, you mentioned I was the past president. I was the past president from 2009 until Gabby came along and this synergy was just created because really, I mean, when you think about it, we're Latina leaders of Kern County and our purpose is to build leadership. And so, to continue as president didn't really make sense. I think sometimes when you think about leaders, we think that it has to be the person at the forefront, but it's not always the case. It's also about bringing others along. And so I think with uh, Gabby, what I found is this real partnership and passion and commitment to the organization. So it really doesn't matter who's what or what the title is, it's about the work. And oh get, I don't know if you want to touch on the programs like, a little that, bit. There's or... nothing else for me to say about the history. That's it, right? And, and you're absolutely right, Norma. It's you were the. I always joke that you were the president for 20 years. I always joke that, right? But it, it felt like that to you, um, I think. And so, but but Norma's absolutely right. Um, for us, it was um, when Norma and I first met. It was like instant, just instant sisterhood, and we carry that um through through latina leaders and and we've kind of developed this co-leadership if you will um of president past president um but for us really our programs are are what drives us um we have two programs we have our youth leadership program and our latina leadership institute um our latina leadership institute is a professional development program for adult women professional women um, whether it be they want to grow their career or they just want to overcome personal obstacles. Really, what we help our women figure out is their why. What is your purpose? What is your purpose in life? And how is that going to align with the work that you're doing? And if it doesn't align, how do we help you check that box and, and, and do that, right? Like, how can we help, help fulfill your why and get you paid for it? Um, and so that's our Latina Leadership Institute. We've had so many women go through that program um, and, and a lot of them have started businesses. Many of them just moved out of, out of the state and just started a brand new life. But all of that came from this Latina Leadership Institute. And for me, Latina Leadership, um, LLI is what we call it, holds, holds a special place in, in my heart, right? Because I feel like once I went through LLI, like it just, the doors just opened because it helped me overcome these barriers that I, that I was carrying. And so um, that's what we try to do for our women and, and we try to meet the women where they're at. Um, our youth program is, whew, that is Norma's baby. <laughs> um, Norma developed that, that program for um, our youth program and I will give you a little bit of, of an insight as to what the program is and then I'll let Norma talk about why she decided to start this youth program. But, um, but the youth leadership program is a nine month, nine month intensive 
um, program that we offer sophomore juniors and seniors, um, yeah, sophomore juniors and seniors in high school. And um, we basically mentor these young leaders for the next three years. We help them overcome generational traumas. We help them overcome self-esteem issues. We teach them about self-defense, relationships, um, red flags to look out for. Um, we talk to them about um, their why and aligning that with their own personal mission. Um, we help them apply for college or get financial aid. We take them on field trips. We're taking them to UCLA this year. We help expose um, these young leaders um, into the, help them see the possibilities, help them see that there's life outside of Kern County um, and help them see that not only can you go to school wherever you wanna go, but you can be successful and you can find a career that fulfills you and, and fulfills your everyday life. Um, and then bring that back to Kern County because that's the goal, right, Norma? It's how do we get them to come back and contribute back to, to their county and to their city? And so we help them prepare for that. Um, we take them to, um, like I was telling you all earlier, we take them to Cesar Chavez Monument to La Paz and we help them see their history. They have to learn about where they come from so that they can learn or, or figure out where they're going. Um, and so I'll let Norma talk about kind of the why this was created, what, um, because I believe the youth program has been around for 19 years, Norma. Yeah, and I, um, I, I can't say, I can't take the credit. I know Gabby always tried to say that I'm the one that created the program. The program actually existed since before I became president, but I think what happened is, um, we didn't have a structure to it. And so um, really trying to develop that structure and the purpose of it is, uh, we, we just really needed that. And that stemmed from going and speaking to girls at the high school and learning that the exact same issues that they were dealing with or going through were the exact same issues that I had gone through when I was their age. And it was like, this is ridiculous. I mean, how many years have gone by? And in Kern County, um, you know, we have parents that were uh, immigrants and to think about allowing their daughter to leave their home to go to college, to go to, you know, UCLA or anywhere else was difficult. Mm -hmm. And that resonated with me because I, I am a graduate of UCLA, but when I was um, planning to attend, I had to lie to my parents. My dad didn't know what he was signing because he couldn't read English. I didn't ask my mom to sign it because she could. Um, and <laughs> I didn't let them know till a week I, before I had to be at UCLA that, oh, hey, by the way, someone needs to drop me off there. And um, speaking to these girls and hearing all these dreams that they were still unable to fulfill because their parents still wanted to hold them so tight. So the program is twofold. The very first session, we sit with their parents and we let them know, you've got to prioritize this for your daughter and you've got to um, support them. If your son has a soccer game at the same time on the same day, you are not picking him over her. You are dropping her off to this session and then you can go do whatever you want. And um, that was really important because it started helping our young girls see their value and these conversations between parents and child, you know, evolved. So fast forward, we, we know that and recognize that things have changed. But what's been so interesting is that the program remains relevant. We don't change our curriculum a whole bunch. We don't change the session topics. We just change who is presenting to these young women. Um, we're dealing with a lot more issues now from whether it is sexual identity, whether it is conversations with their parents, uh, coming from households that are so diverse now. Um, and so we managed to shift the program and still remain relevant to these young women. Gabby said our biggest purpose is for them to come back because we have such a need for them to be back here. We're seeing that happen. Um, we now have leaders in the program because we have leaders that volunteer their time to help with these sessions that were in the program, that graduated from the program, who went off, got their degrees, are back teaching, are back doing other things. And this was the first stop that they made to give back to and pour into our youth. That's phenomenal. I would love to talk more about that. 
offline and how we can capture some of that data and accomplishment. Um, Cause I think that's particularly important for, for rural communities is, you know, you, we, we make these investments in these remarkable programs and for all the good reasons, you know, sometimes we leave and we don't come back home, but I think part of what your work is showing too is that you're giving these young women reasons to come back home and, and empowering them to know that there's a space that they can grow and um, add to their community as well. So that's that's amazing. Yes. Um, I, you know, in light of sort of you, both of your experiences with the programs, what would you consider maybe the signature or the greatest lesson learned thus far about developing and training Latina leaders in particular? <laughs> well, I was writing down my 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 thoughts on this and I just went down like a huge rabbit hole. I'm like, I was telling Norma, I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna if I'm gonna say all that because there's so much, but um honestly, I, I will tell you for, for me personally, I feel that like Norma said, we are all going through the exact same thing. Whether it's our students that are in the nice part of town, go to the nice private school, um, or students that are in other parts of the town and other parts of Kern County where it's not that nice, or business owners and professional women in corporate America. We all face the same challenges, right? Like we all face that thoughts of unworthiness and the traumas and generational traumas and racism. We all face that at all levels. And so I think for me, it's that that lesson is stop. I feel like stop just assuming that the, you can't relate to this Latina, right? That's the big lesson. And that's the lesson that we teach all of our women. Um, just because the, maybe that person is from a different background doesn't mean that you don't share the same maybe values or the same thoughts or the same obstacles. So I think for me, it's that's been one of the greatest, greatest lessons um, in training and developing Latinas. Um, it's we're all in the same boat. We all experience all of this. Maybe it's different levels, but at the end of the day, we all experience the same thing. I think for me, it's been that you really have to meet women where they are and you have to show grace and patience with one another. Our, our, although our journeys are unique, much to what Gabriela says, there's always that common thread. And so the reality is there is no one route to empowerment and having that patience and understanding that sometimes women are ready to kind of break free and get into it. And sometimes they just need a little more care. And so showing that grace and patience, I think, has been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned because I want everyone to feel this or experience this and experience that. And it's not realistic, right? And so um, even with our Latina Leadership Institute, I, I helped develop that program as well. And it's only four sessions, but they are four of the most powerful sessions that women have gone through. And I hear it from them. Their feedback is because of that, I decided to go back and get my doctorate or I asked for that promotion or it gave me what I needed. And there are other women that are like, I'm not ready for this. Maybe I'll come back next year. And that's okay, right? You have to be ready to accept what's there for you now. Thank you. Um, shifting a little bit, because I think you know part of what the Ramos is trying to do is we're trying to create you know, find leaders like yourselves who, who are emboldened to volunteer their time, their heart, you know, and like reliving a lot of these experiences that you all speak to as well with a new group of women every year. Um, and so in terms of sustainability and program development, um, how, how do you, how have you all been able to maintain an organization on a volunteer basis for 25 years? What's the secret? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's having families that have the same commitment and vision that we do. I mean, mm -hmm. I think both for Gabby and myself that support, you know, I have four children and I think ever since they were tiny, tiny, they were at sessions with me, they were there. Even now when I have a, a youth session and I'm like, oh, they're like, mom, you're still doing the youth program. What do you need <laughs> help with? So, um, but I, I, I think it's also knowing that 
really the organization needs to grow. And, and Gabby and I have been having really difficult discussions because although our passion is there, there's also the reality, right? And it takes a toll. It takes a toll on a lot of things. So while we are passionate volunteers, we realize that without administrative support, um, this will just continue to be a project. And if we walk away, then what happens to that project? And so mm -hmm. that that support to be able to have paid staff mm -hmm. and paid staff that's paid well, because yes. sometimes as nonprofits, we also don't recognize the importance because we're supposed to be giving, mm -hmm. but we also need to take care of our own. And, and I think for, for me, I mean, it, it, we're a hundred percent working board. Um, mm -hmm. it, really we're staff. <laughs> uh, Latina leaders is our second full-time job. Um, so we're, we're, it's not a board, right? A traditional board where you have admin and help and support and, and administrative help. Um, everyone on this board, um, donates their time and, and, um, Norma is absolutely right. Having, um, that support system where the, the spouse and the kids can help, um, is crucial. Because there's times where, um, I mean, my husband is like, if you talk to Norma one more time today, I'm going to scream. If I hear the words Latina leaders, I'm going to lose it. And I'm like, sorry, kid, this is what it is. Um, but having the, the family um, support is so, so critical and important. We would not be able to do what we do without that, that support system. Um, but really, it's it, the organization has been running because we have a great volunteer group. We have women that dedicate their time and their Saturdays. We have women that are like, just tell me what you need. I'll drop everything and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, it's not because, I mean, it's probably because they, they love Norma and I, right? But it <laughs> has nothing to do with us. It's because they love the organization and they love what it stands for, and they see the potential that this organization um, could bring and or the impact that this organization has made on them or someone that they know. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the reason why this organization has been able to run for so long is that you we genuinely have a group of women that will put themselves last, as you can see from Norma and I, right? Starting <laughs> from the, starting from us, but, we, we're willing to put ourselves last to help our women. We're willing to do whatever we need to do to go to a Saturday session, to go on a field trip and take these students um, to UCLA, which is, or USC, Santa Barbara, we've taken them everywhere. But it's really, it's putting your own needs to the side and just saying, okay, what do we need to do? When do we need to do it? Who do we need to talk to? And I feel like um, the board, We've had great women that run that have run the organization and have done great things, but really without our volunteers, without these volunteers being able to, us being able to lean on them, it, it would be so, so difficult. And sorry, I just saw Liliana, one of our volunteers just joined, sorry. Well, and um, I, I, I was gonna throw that shout out. I see some of our board members yes. and some of our volunteers on, and see, there you have it. They're, they saw this and they're supporting. <laughs> Wow. Um, so as you look forward, you know, how are you imagining leveraging sort of the 25 years of experience, leveraging the fact that you can sort of bring people together to step up, um, to take you where you want to go? Just because I, you know, I've been working with the Association of Leadership Programs, which focuses on community leadership programs, you know, things that are related to chamber. And what you all are doing is at that level. Right. And so it's something I asked myself too, as a national organization, um, how do we leverage sort of our successes to take us where do we where we want to go? I, I I think it starts right here. Like we're 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 doing that right now. We're or we're attempting to do that, right? Is to how to how to leverage the the contacts and the relationships that we have. I think a lot of times um as Latinas, we're we're scared to be like, hey, we're part of Latina leaders. Can you help us? We need funding for this, or we need funding for that, or hey, we need more volunteers. Can your organization send us some? I think um, 
that's just the norm for Latinas. It's hard for us um, to ask for that help and to ask for um, the support. And I think more and more, and we're seeing that we have 25 years of experience. Not only can we do this, we can do it successfully, but it's leveraging these opportunities to be able to come out of our box and say, you know what, let's think outside of Kern County. Let's think, mm -hmm. let's think globally. Let's, mm -hmm. let's partner with Angela. Let's think about, yeah. let's go to Mexico and bring mm -hmm. Latina Leadership Institute to Mexico, right? Let's mm -hmm. offer something in Spanish for our women. It's having that, those conversations and that support system um, and really just not being afraid to just put yourself out there. I, I think for us, that's what we're trying to do. And I'll let Norma talk, but that's kind of the conversations that Norma and I have been having lately. Yeah, I think that's so right. I mean, when when you see the power and the impact that you have in Kern, and to think that, gosh, if we were to take this to Mexico, there's so many women that we could empower there. But again, it's like frustrating because we look at ourselves and say, but we're so stretched for time. Where do we get started? <laughs> well, it is this. It's starting to open these doors and saying, look, we know how to do it. How do we leverage your resources? Or how do you know, how do we open those doors to be able to do it? Um, but I think it's also really exciting that we're expanding beyond just Latinas. So I have to tell a quick story that I know that Gabby and I just are like, wow, this really happened. Yes, um, so do it. <laughs> Kern County is, you know, it, it's, it's a hard place for Latinos that are trying to come up. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just the reality. If you look at statistics, we're not represented in at all levels of leadership. But um, recently, there was a lot of energy and a lot of synergy over an election that took place for a city council race. Mm -hmm. And the city council race was a young woman from the Sikh community that put herself out there and said, I want to run for office. And it turns out that that young woman had gone through our Latina leaders program when she was in high school. And she said, you know, the Latina leaders program impacted me like you cannot imagine and opened my eyes to so many things. And that's why I wanted to come back. That's why. And she makes no bones about it. She does speeches and she says, I was a Latina leader, I am a Latina <laughs> leader, being from the Sikh community because she understood that there were a lot of parallels with um, our, our different mm -hmm. cultures. And so that is really what's starting to happen is that we're seeing this merging and this embracing of multiple cultures. Yeah. And to me, that is my dream and hope for Latina leadership in the Central Valley mm -hmm. is that we're opening all kinds of doors in different ways, but we're also speaking up for one another. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there's a lot of power in that. And as Gabriela says, we spend hours talking about what is next and what could we do if we had just a little more resources, what would mm -hmm. we be able to do? Yeah, well, count me... Um, as a part of the team to start brainstorming resources. I um, recently Lideramos joined Somos el Poder, which is this national fundraising um, organization dedicated to how Latinos can improve, improve our position and success in philanthropy. And it's been really remarkable because um, Armando Sumayo and his team have really transparent sort of conversations about sort of the power of our giving and the power of ask. And I, I repeat that here just because, you know, exploring sort of what's the potential of giving circles. Even if you just look at your alumni group from the past 25 years, you know, what if a group of 10 of, 10 of women, you know, decided to raise money on behalf of Latina leaders of Kern County? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think from a foundation perspective, you know, I would see you all as a dream come true to a foundation because your program tested and proven and, you know, the results are there. Um, whether or not we have a formal, you know, evaluation for it, that's something that we can work on. But I, I see so much potential. And I also see the potential, you know, in terms of partnering with other Latina leadership initiatives across the country and even internationally as well to kind of look at what are the best practices right? Um, to what I saw in both of you when we first met is that you have a co-leadership model, 
even though Gabriela takes on the title of president, it's very evident that there's a lot of collaboration happening here, as well as I imagine among sort of the other members of your board and, and sort of the people who volunteer and, and show up for your, your, your activities and events. And so how do we honor that and how do we reward that? Um, yes, in terms of resources. And so, you know, I think as, as you move forward, I'm happy to provide whatever um, sort of strategic advice that I can, but, you know, and I challenge myself that too is, how are we strategically planning for economic growth? Because there is sort of an economic benefit to the community based on the community impact that you're making through your programs and sort of this story about this newly elected, did, was she elected? The, yes. Yes, this newly elected is evidence of that. Um, and so I, I really look forward to, to how we can continue to foster this because yeah, like Gabriela said, we can't be bashful, we can't be timid, we can't sort of hide behind, behind our corazón and search the fun we, we have doing all these things. We have to also be compensated because it's a reciprocal relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. And we don't want either of you to be burned out in any in any way. <laughs> oh, man. Well, and, and, and you know what, Angela, this has turned into a co-leadership very organically <laughs> And like, we did not plan for this, right? Norma was like, I've been president for 12 years. It's time for you to take over, right? And I'm like, okay, let's do it. But in us not having resources, right? We, we have to co-lead this organization because you're absolutely right. If we don't, we will get burned out. If we don't, one of us will say, you know what, I can't anymore, right? And so um, you're, you're absolutely right, is how do we leverage that? And I think for us, it's our, it's our culture of, no le, voy a, no le voy a decir a Angela que necesito funding, right? No, como crees? No le voy, I can't say that, no. And, and that's something that not only are we trying to change that within the organization, but we're trying to instill that in our, in our girls and our women. It's don't be shy to go after what you need. Go ahead, Norma. And I have to tell you that there's an irony in all this because both Gabby and I in our respective professional roles are not shy about asking for money and have brought in millions of dollars or have distributed millions of dollars to the community. But when it comes to the organization, that shyness creeps in and we're like, okay, well, can we really ask for half a million dollars for that million years? And in hindsight, I think about it and I'm like, absolutely we can because we have the proven record. Yeah. We have young girls. I mean, our youth leadership program has a 90% college going rate. Our 90% of our girls end up going to a two or four year college or university. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of them will either go into the military or uh, open up businesses. Yep. I mean, there's just such a vast diversity and that's also what we try to do is what is what is that goal? Mm -hmm. And if it's not school, that's fine, but you need to be doing something. You've got yeah. to be the best you, you can be. Yes, but I like that, a half a million dollars. So now we just get to build the strategic plan <laughs> that shows incremental growth to get to that half a million yeah, dollars. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think that's, you know, I always ask myself, what is that barrier, right? for us making the ask. And I don't necessarily think it's, a, it's an easy pinpoint, but it's doing the work as you all are doing in your program with, with these young girls and these women. Um, and slowly, poco a poco, you know, we'll chip away at whatever it is to, to you know, let our light shine and, and allow the, the resources to flow in. Um, I, I was going to say, I think one one area, uh, and I think a lot of nonprofits suffer from this, is really the capacity for marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, you get dollars, but a lot of the dollars aren't allocated for promoting. And yeah. how do we tell these incredible stories if we're not, you know, what what is the best avenue to do that? And this is one platform. So thank you so much, Angela, yes. for allowing us the platform to share. But, you know, I, I know Gabby and I could spend hours telling really important stories of these women that are doing incredible things. But um, as a nonprofit, we don't extend the time 
or have the expertise to be able to do that? Well, it's not really as a nonprofit, Norma. It's as an organization that's under-resourced because mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. nonprofits who are in the millions and the billions that operate, right? Yeah, However, yeah. And so I think that's important to put into frame of mind as well. You're not able to do it right now just because you don't have the resources. But as long as you have the vision and the ganas and you yeah. understand the value and the importance, now it's just sort of making that ask so that you can slowly sort of build that into sort of your operations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have to remind myself that as well. Like, <laughs> there are billion dollar nonprofits around yeah, the world that, true. <laughs> that have all true. the resources in the world. Yeah. Por que no? Why not us, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sort of getting into that, that sort of mind, heart space, what is your dream and hope for Latina leadership in the Central Valley and in the United States? <laughs> yeah. oh my god it's it honestly for for me i'm just gonna my my dream my goal my i don't know my dream for latina leaders right is really leadership in general i want to be i want to get to the point where we're no longer saying oh she's the first latina mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm sick of hearing that. I, mm -hmm. I want to get to the point where it's the new normal for us to be at the table. It's the nor it's normal to see five women in the oil and gas industry, five Latinas, not just one, right? Mm -hmm. It's normal to see Norma at the state level. It's, it's normal to see us. Let's normalize that so that we don't have to say, oh, mija, you're the first Latina. Oh, nunca en mi día hubiera visto eso. Oh, that's so amazing. I don't, I don't want to, I want to get away from that. My dream is that one day, like, it's the normal to have five Latinas in a professional meeting where there's, you know, they're, I just want to normalize that. CEO. That's my dream. <laughs> Whether the that CEO, decision. right? Making <laughs> those big decisions. Um, and, and so that to me, we do that, I can sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it is also getting to the point where our girls see that. You know, there's one question that we ask our girls, and this may seem like a surprise to us, but it's the reality of what we hear session after session. And in one session, I asked them, name 10 badass top Latinas. And they can't. They'll name Selena, they'll name JLo or artists. But, you know, even here in Kern County, we have Dolores Huerta. And depending on the school these girls are coming from, they may or may not know about Dolores Huerta. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yep. get outside of Kern County and Dolores is, I mean, yep. give me give me a break. And so mm -hmm. my, my, my hope is that these young girls start to see the five CEOs, the five powerful doctors or other people and are able to speak to that and feel pride in that and see themselves in that. Yes. Yeah. So it's really, you know, each year I tell Gabby, all right, I'm letting go of the youth leadership program. And after the first session, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much work. I can't go anywhere. Gabby. <laughs> well, well and, we, and we just had um, the, Norma, I have to brag, I'm sorry, but we just had um, our most emotional session of all of the nine sessions, um, which is the mirror exercise and Norma leads it. Um, and the mirror exercise is really um, them looking at themselves in the mirror and telling themselves that they love each, that they love themselves, that they're valued, that they're enough, that they're worthy. Um, and even for the leaders, it, 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 we have mentors and even for them, it's hard, right? And so Norma leads that and, and year after year, she, she's like, I'm just going to do the mirror exercise and then you know, we, some, someone else can facilitate. And I'm like, no, you need to, <laughs> no, you got it. Right. And so it's, it's those types of stories that that's where um, our inspiration comes from. And that's where we see like what needs to change in the world so that our girls can see themselves like Norma said. And I mean, our, our self-esteem and self-empowerment session is, is so emotional and it's so heart 
it's just heartfelt and you could see the barriers just coming down and the walls and that in itself is such a powerful and and if we do nothing else as long as we do that session right um we can help our our women and our girls see far beyond what they even even dreamed of so I had a, I had a brag about Norma. Sorry. Uh, it, it, no, it, it's such a powerful and empowering session. Uh, like Gabby said, even for our adult women, um, you know, it, I think it, it breaks us all down, but at the end, we feel so powerful as a group. And there's always one or two women who just cannot do it. Young girls who just, mm. I mean, they are in tears in the corner shaking because they cannot look at themselves in the eyes in the mirror. And suddenly they're enveloped by 60 other women that are holding them up and supporting and they're able to get through it. And, you know, we, we this last session, as Gabby said, we had it and it was so significant to me because one of the young women that I said has gone on, graduated and is now volunteering, stood up and she just started crying and saying, you do not understand how this exercise changed my own life. I had never done that. We look at ourselves in our in the mirror, but we don't really see ourselves and we're not honest with ourselves. And to have that space to learn to do it was really empowering. And so, mm-hmm. oh, like I said, can, we could speak forever, but. <laughs> yeah, can, can, if you don't mind, would you mind telling us a little bit more how that, that session works? You mentioned 60 people are there accompanying the, the young So women? there are 60 young women in our youth leadership oh, program. Oh, wow. And so we, we- Well, that's low actually. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the lowest groups yes. that we've had. But um, we set up mirrors, full size mirrors around the room, and we spend the morning kind of um, just. It's a hard session because we ask them to dig deep mm-hmm. and look at you know what are the traumas that you have, what are the things that you're holding, what are you fearful of, what are you know what holds you back, and um, at the end of it, it is these mirrors, you take your, your group, you have one leader, one leader has about five to eight girls. They take them up to the mirror and we have that accountability of, if you're not looking at yourself in the eyes and speaking to yourself, then you have to do it again because this is about you and your space. And so, um, yeah, it, it, so it's broken up into five different mirrors, all the little groups and you go up and you do your, your exercise. Wow. And and so, within and within that, um, you have a leader. If if the students has their their leader right next to them, their mentor that is um, guiding them through the exercise, and then of course they have the other um, students right behind them. But um, but yeah, that's where the the sixty women come come in. Um, but like Norma said, it's incredibly emotional. I lead the senior session and Norma leads the sophomore junior session. And even then I'm like, I'm not going to go into that room because it's such a safe, it's a vault, right? Mm -hmm. No one in, no one out. And it's, it's a very sacred space for the, for the students and the, and our women. And so even me, I'm like, Hey, can I go in? I don't want to interrupt. Um, because it's so incredibly, incredibly emotional, but after that session you know you feel like you can breathe you feel like you just have a new sense of purpose and you can go out and conquer that's how they feel we can do anything thank you yeah um thanks norma for replying to diana's question about when the next cohort is for the latina leadership institute and i can give you guys dates too um i can go into that right now if you'd like angela yeah, go ahead, and I'm um, and I will send um, a link to to everyone on who registered, you know, of your website, yeah. um, so they can learn more about your program. You know, we everybody's invited. I'm inviting them to Bakersfield on July yeah, 15th. Yes, um, so I, yeah, so we have our Latina Leadership Institute. We will um, have applications for that. Um, that's the professional leadership program for women, for adult women. We will have applications for that in April. And then sessions will start May, so it'll be May, June, July. There's some cohorts that elect to have a fourth, excuse me, a fifth session. So May, June, July, August. Um, so there's some that will say we want another session because they're just loving it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's been the past. Um, ladies have asked to do one more, so it'll be anywhere from four to five sessions, but it starts in May. Um, and then for our youth 
Were you going to say something, Norma? No, go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll say it after you're done. <laughs> okay. For our youth, uh, our youth leadership program, um, applications for that will become available in August. Um, and then we'll start in October. So October is our first session. So October, November, all the way um, to April. And then they graduate in May. Um, and so if you're, if you have a student that you think might be interested, um, just please let, let me know. We will do whatever we need to do to ensure that they get accepted. They'll be in. No worries. <laughs> um, we don't turn anyone away. We never do. Um, wow. So if you have a student, just let us know so they can, they can be, uh, we can look out for their application. And then um, if you want to be a, a mentor or a leader, if you think you want to give back, there is, a, it's a three-year commitment to be a mentor. So just know that. Um, there's an application you need to fill out um other than that we'll we'll go through um like a little orientation to kind of share with you what to expect um but those are ways that you can get involved um if you want to become a member kernlatinas.org um it's 50 dollars a year um, and that goes to support our youth program um, mainly our youth program we have a mixer coming up um <laughs> I believe it's at the end of March. Um, please follow March 23rd. us. March 23rd. March 23rd. Okay. Um, where you can just mingle and mix. Um, we believe in growing your network. We believe, especially here in Kern County, it's about who you know in this county. And so we provide that platform for women to know and learn um, one another and, and kind of fellowship and just, you know, get to know folks. Um, and then our big fundraiser, I'm, this is an ad, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> our, our big fundraiser is July 15th. Um, it's going to be at Bakersfield College. Yay, thank you, Norma. Um, but it's July 15th. We have sponsorship packets available. Um, you can attend. Um, you don't have to, actually, let me go back. Last year, we only sold 22 tickets because all of the um, sponsorships were, were taken up. So like we had to close our general admission and like we only sold like 20 tickets. So we'll let you, we can let you know when the link opens up for that. Um, we'll make, well, this time being at Bakersfield College, we can, we can have a 500 person party and it'd be fine. Right, Norma? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, you, can, you can see who the cautious one is in the group, right? <laughs> no. oh, oh, I know. Okay. What, what I also was going to say is that we feel very fortunate because as, as we all know, the pandemic hit a lot of organizations hard, mm -hmm. but we managed to keep at least our youth leadership program. We shifted it to an online format. Mm -hmm. We had girls that were committed the three years oh and graduated God. from the program. It was yeah. amazing. So you know, we're, we're starting to build up again. And, you know, um, I think it's, it's important to be honest with one another. And uh, I lead the Latina Leadership Institute. And over the last year, two years, I struggled. I struggled to get back in the seat and saddle and be able to, to provide that. But the commitment is still there. So Gabby grabs me and says, Norma, you've got to do it. And so come May, we're back strong and ready to re really ready to serve our women. Wow. And and we 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 take volunteers for we need volunteers for everything. <laughs> Kylie, we take volunteers for everything. Kylie, <laughs> Kylie, don't don't play with me, Kylie, because I will. Yes, but yes, we we need volunteers for the event. Um, we need volunteers for the program. Uh, anything you can think of, we we always take volunteers. Yay! Thanks, Kylie. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I want to kind of open it up to to those on the on the call. You know, feel free to un, unmute yourself and offer a question or affirmation to Graciela and Norma. Thanks, I know there's Christine. some amazing um, Latina leaders in this group just by looking at a few of the names. Um, I appreciate you all joining and listening. I I think like for me, this was really awe-inspiring again, because I knew your programs were awesome and off the charts, but then when I really look at the scope and I start thinking about sort of the impact over 25 years, it's phenomenal. There are no more excuses not to grow yeah. 
resource wise um, and to achieve some of those dreams. And so when I when I'm in town in, in April, let's do some strategic I planning. Love it. We're gonna spend a day a, a oh, yes. day together. Angela, I'm telling you, don't play with us because don't you'll be stuck. Because... They'll be stuck oh. all day. I don't, I don't play. I don't play. I, I don't play. I, I'm, I'm, I'm for real. I'm for real. That's, and that's I, really awesome. Thank you. We really appreciate your, your you know, Gabby was joking about her husband saying, if that's Norma, hang up. I mean, it, it, we, were, <laughs> we could spend all day Saturday together, just now just planning things out. So, um, and I, I see Sochil on the call. I see yes. the PC on the call. It's the same with all of us. I mean, when we sit and really talk, it's like, this sisterhood and the time just goes by and, and yeah. such a deep commitment to what we're doing. Yeah. And and I, I, I do want to acknowledge Sochid Garcia, um, a local attorney here in Kern County, um, and she sits on the board. And then um, Leticia Velasquez, a local business owner um, here in, in Kern County, and she's also on our board. Um, and then Liliana Villanueva, um, she's one of our leaders. So thank you, Liliana, for for being here. We just saw you, or we just saw you Saturday. So sorry that you're back. <laughs> um, but thank you, Liliana, for all of your help. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our women. Great. Well, I just, I you know, as we close, I want to just sort of offer some other opportunities through Lideramos that are coming up. Um, uh, this March, I'll be doing two workshops for those who are interested in exploring or maybe revisiting sort of why, what's the sort of the value proposition and the why and so what of Latino leadership programs in their community. There'll be one in English and one in Spanish and I'll, I'll follow up with an email with those dates specifically. And then in June, I'm gonna be doing a three-part training um, series on Torleramos curriculum, which includes five different elements. And for me, it's not necessarily sort of a, a manual of how to do leadership development, but it's really how to empower how to empower you as a, at the local level to think about what you want leadership development to look like in your community. And so these type of opportunities are important because I will lean on and highlight programs like Latina Leaders of Kern County to kind of show what what are the possibilities when you're very intentional um, about you know what you see um, in your community and what you see that's needed um, in terms of you know not necessarily the lack, but how do we see who we are? How do we visibilize our strengths and normalize sort of our leadership contributions um, that happen on an everyday basis? And we have our national symposium. It will be in Kansas City this year, um, October 25th through the 28th. All of you are invited. Um, I will be hopefully putting out a save the date and a call for proposals soon. I would love, 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 love for um, any of the Latina leaders of Kern County to, to join us in Kansas City, because it's important for you all to build these connections and relationships with others, leaders like yourselves. One, to know you're not alone, you know, to exchange some of those, those battle stories and to encourage one another, right? That you can, yeah. you can do this um, and you will do this. So um, let, let me know if, if anybody yeah. wants to learn more about that. Yeah, please, please let us know Norma and I's mission this year. We told ourselves this, we have to start getting out of Kern County and make these connections. So we're, we're totally open to that. Um, we, we, we will be there. <laughs> just let us know. I will. I just let you know. And I'll, I'll remind you when I come okay. into town um, and we have our strategic planning session. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yay. Yeah, I don't, I don't joke around either when it's time to, you. you know, this is an opportunity that's too good not to dedicate at least some of my my resources and my sort of experience to. And it's also hits home because, you know, what your program does is really sort of speaks to my experience to growing up in, in the Central Valley. So thank you. Thank you both. Um, but any closing words before we sign off? You know, I, I do want to say, I have to say that both Gabby and I are fortunate. We we work for companies or employers that are very yeah. supportive of this work. And so um, I have to give a shout out to um, my boss, the new state chancellor for the, the California Community College System, um, Sonia Christian, because she has always supported the work of Latina leaders and supported the organization. And Gabby, I know it's the same for your company. Yeah. And it's just good to know that they encourage us and support what we do with the organization. 
yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, California Resources Corporation, um, I handle, like I said, I handle our, our charitable portfolio. And so I'm in charge of distributing the dollars for the company um, through our nonprofits and, and um, throughout the state, right? And so um, I, I, it's amazing to work for a company that supports your, your dreams and vision and um, supports the organizations that you dedicate your time to. And so, yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say thank you, Angela, for, for providing us with this opportunity. Yes. Um, this has really fired us again. <laughs> oh my God. Oh gosh. Here, here comes another Saturday brainstorm. Here comes <laughs> another Saturday session, but no, but, but really, um, I think it's important for us to do these, these platicas, like you said, and, mm -hmm. um, get inspiration and draw inspiration and sometimes the energy right sometimes i need that that angela energy um and <laughs> yes. so th this is so great and and trust me like i'm sure norma and i are going to talk later this afternoon um through dinner like we always do but um <laughs> this has ignited a, a, a fire that it wasn't out <laughs> but <laughs> It wasn't, but, and I think it's motivated us even more, right? right? I mean, you, you, you've, you've, uh, we put it out hey, into the universe hey, and you said, hey, yes, hey. go for it. So yes, right. we're so excited to even. From fire to forgata. Yes. Yeah, so, there you go. So thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank, thank you both. Thank, thanks to <laughs> those who sh are showing your faces. I love seeing people as well. And to all of those other people who joined us um, this afternoon. I, you know, muchísimas gracias. Uh, you haven't already, check out their Instagram, um, the Latina Leaders of Kern County. It's, they always have cool stuff on there too. Um, so yeah, the possibilities are endless and I really look forward to, yeah, to seeing how, not necessarily how your program grows, but how the spirit of reciprocity blesses you and allows your work to deepen and expand um, beyond your imaginations. Because like you said, this is work that yes. can be echoed and replicated in other parts of the world. And so, um, yeah, and I'm going to try to, my yeah, well, I'll, I'll follow up to schedule yes. our strategic oh planning. My goodness. Yeah. And if it. anybody's interested in anything, you know, always feel free to contact me at, through Lideramos. It's Angela at Lideramos.org. And um, you all have a wonderful afternoon or evening wherever you're at.